When I put in Nakajima Satoru F1 Hero, I was expecting just another standard racing game. Instead, I found something really special. I wouldn't call it good, just special. In Japan, the game has a reputation as Kusoge, or bad game, but there are some people who push back against that designation. And I think I side with them. It's one of the most difficult games on the Famicom, and even completing a race is a real challenge. But that difficulty came out of an attempt to do something very different from previous racing games. So I feel like the Kusoge label's a bit harsh. I guess the big question here is, who is Nakajima Satoru? If you don't know F1, you probably just assumed he was a driver. And if you do know F1, you probably went, who's Nakajima Satoru? He was an F1 driver, and his claim to fame is being Japan's first driver who got points in the Championship League. But his career in F1 was just four seasons long, and he was kind of an average driver for that class. So nobody outside of Japan took much notice of him, but there's this period in the late 80s into the 90s where he was the face of F1 in Japan. So even though he retired from racing in 1991, never placing better than 6th in any race, they kept making games based on him until 1994. We're going to see a sequel on the Famicom that was released right about the same time he retired. As for this game, Human decided to do something very different from previous racing games on the Famicom. They made a simulator. Now this isn't the first game that would be a driving simulator, but it is the first console game to make a serious attempt at realism in a racing game. Racing games always have this split. Arcade on one side where you have to slam the gas down as hard as you can, and maybe occasionally let it up as you hit a tricky corner. And simulators on the other where you have to deal with things like the friction of the tires and the mass of the car. There's nothing wrong with either approach, but obviously it takes a lot more effort to play simulators, and they really emphasize getting to know the machine and the track. Now F1 Hero isn't a great simulator. It is on an 8-bit console with only digital inputs after all. You really need analog inputs to make this kind of game work. But I also respect them for making the attempt. Somebody has to be the first people to try it. F1 Hero gives you three different modes. Warming up just lets you drive five laps on any track. You can also pick whatever car you like. In the warming up mode, before you start the race, Nagajima Satoru comes out and teaches you how to drive that track. He'll let you know which corners are tricky and the speeds that you have to take them at. Battle mode adds a competitor to that, Five laps on any track, and you can choose who you're going to race against, including Nakajima Satoru, of course. While you're racing in battle mode, you don't have a map of the track. You do have this bar in the middle that shows you roughly where in the track's distance both racers are, but it's not especially useful. Grand Prix mode is the heart of the game, and also the worst thing about it. Here you compete in a series of races against a rival, and if you do better than them across the series, then you move up to the next rival. There are nine rivals, and for the first rival, you race tracks one through four against them. For the second, it's tracks one through five. Now you might think this increases linearly, but when you reach the ninth rival, it's all 16 tracks in the game. To complete Grand Prix mode, you need to complete 82 races. Even if you do well, each race takes about 10 minutes to complete. So F1 Hero requires consistently good driving from you across over 12 hours of racing. It's no wonder that this is considered to be one of the most difficult Famicom games. Fortunately, there is a password system for this game, so you can slowly work your way up the ranks and retry when you screw up. As for those tracks, there are 16 of them, and they are all real-world F1 courses. In fact, I'd call that the best feature of F1 Hero. Of course, some of these tracks have changed in the years since the game's release, but the layouts are pretty much exactly how they were in 1988. Using real F1 tracks is a bit more distinctive than just laying out something for a video game. And now we have to get to the driving. Like in other racing games we've seen, A button is accelerator, B button is brake. But here you have five gears in your car. You start in neutral and shift up by pressing down. 
I'm going to guess that they did it that way because it replicates the feel of the real car, but pressing down to go faster still feels off. Since the speed of the car is fairly realistic, for many of the tracks, a good lap time will be around two minutes. There aren't a lot of opportunities to build up speed in fourth gear. Most of the time you're going to want to drive in second or third. One of the vehicles available to you does have an automatic, and I'd recommend using that to get a feel for how fast you can do the tracks. In F1 Hero, you can't hold down a direction to steer. Each tap of a direction on the pad changes the wheel just a little bit, so you have to tap multiple times to adjust how you're steering. And at high speeds, the car has a lot of inertia. You aren't really able to turn very quickly, and trying to turn hard will make you spin out. The car even tries to spin out. When it's on the verge of losing control, it'll start pulling itself in a direction. The only sign of wear on your machine through the race is this tire meter. Even if you're racing well, you're probably going to have to pit at least once. There's a signal for the pit, but it occurs way before the pit is actually there. And they don't actually have a pit lane, you just pull off into the grass. F1 Hero is the most active Famicom racing game I've seen so far. Even on the long straightaways, you're constantly making little adjustments, trying to prep yourself for your racing line, trying to keep the car from pulling too hard to one side, getting ready to shift the gears up and down as needed. They really make you work for the race. And that's really the worst thing about it. The learning curve here is steep, and I don't really think that in the end the game is worth taking that climb. It's just too restricted by the technology. But even if the Famicom isn't well suited to this kind of simulator, it's interesting that they even tried. We're going to see a few more F1 games that try to be simulationists like this, and F1 Hero paved the way for them. 